Want to make escape rooms with puzzles? Or traps that surprise your friends? Or just cooler builds? Logic Gates make it happen. Part 1 covers not, and, or. Part 2 covers NAND, NOR, XOR. And in Part 3, we'll combine these gates to show how they can work together. We'll save the edge detector for a later lesson. Don't worry, it'll make sense when we get there. At the end, I'll give you some build ideas as guided practice. This is the Wire Academy, and I'm Tonic Thunder. Let's dive in to logic gates. Part 1. Not and or. These are the simplest three gates. Let's start with the not gate. Any signal that passes through the input will be flipped on the output. Here's a simple light switch. When the switch is on, so is the light. Wow! Now let's place a NOT gate in between the switch and the light. When we flip the switch on, the light now turns off. And when the switch is off, the light now turns on. So why use the NOT gate? Maybe something as simple as alternating lights. You could do that by wiring two lights to one switch and place a NOT gate between one of them. Or maybe you want a security door that has a light to indicate when the door is closed. There's tons of uses for alternating signals, and the NOT gate really shines when used with the other gates. It's simple. Not useless. Okay? Let's move on to the AND gate. If we send a signal through input A AND input B, then it will output a signal. Using our light switch again, let's place an AND gate. Toggling the switch won't do anything. This is because we need a second input. So let's add a second switch and connect it. Now when this switch and this switch is on, a signal passes through and turns on the light. So why use the AND gate? It's perfect for something like an escape room where you'd need to activate two switches to open a door. No, 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 no. You can even get more creative. Imagine a co-op puzzle room and there's a lift that will only activate when you stand on a pressure plate and shoot a target. The AND gate is a great way to make interactions require two inputs. But what if you wanted to allow either input to work? That's where the OR gate comes in. If we send a signal through input A or input B, then it will output a signal. Again, we'll demonstrate with the light switch. Let's replace the AND gate from earlier with the OR gate. Now the light turns on with this switch, OR, this switch, OR, both. When you want multiple switches or inputs to do the same thing, the OR gate is the answer. Think of it as a way to combine multiple inputs down to a single wire. Maybe you want a garage door to open using a pressure plate or you can open it with a switch inside. Maybe you want a security system where you have multiple plates in a room that trigger the same alarm. If the OR gate had feelings, which it does, it would be easy going, accepting anything you throw at it. Well, we covered the three simplest logic gates, so let's explore the next three in part two, NAND, NOR, XOR. These names are fancy pants, huh? Don't worry, they're just simple twists on what we already learned. In fact, I'm gonna cover NAND and NOR at the same time just to prove it to you. Both of these do the same thing as the normal AND and OR gates with one key difference. They just flip the signal. For the AND gate, we need both inputs on to pass a signal through. So here's the NAND gate with the same setup. If we turn on both switches, it flips the signal off instead. For the OR gate, we can turn on either switch to send a signal. So here's the NOR gate doing the same thing, but when we turn any switch on, it sends an OFF signal instead. NAND just means NOT AND. NOR just means NOT OR. You can interpret this literally. If you connect a normal AND gate to a NOT gate, you get NAND. If you connect a normal OR gate to a NOT gate, you get NOR. They're just flipping the signal in the output, basically combining these into a single brick. 
Now let's cover some examples for using NAND in NOR. A fun use for NAND could be a dunk tank, where you have to shoot two targets to disable a servo-powered platform. NOR is great for setting up a failsafe, maybe for an alarm. The alarm only plays when both switches are off. Flip either one on, and it's disabled. Flip both on, and you got a failsafe. Time to move on to the last gate, XOR, also known as Exclusive OR. If XOR had feelings, which it does, it would leave the room as soon as you show up. How exclusive. XOR is just like the basic OR gate. Either switch can be on. The key difference from OR is that XOR doesn't allow both inputs at the same time. The simplest example for using XOR is when you have two light switches at opposite sides of a room that control the same light. Turning the first switch on turns the light on, and turning the other switch on will turn the light off. This is how light switches work in the real world. XOR in real life. Now that we covered each logic gate, let's get into part three and talk about combining them. Using all of these logic gates together is really the basis of creating full experiences and contraptions. One gate on its own is capable, sure, but nothing compares to what you can do with a larger circuit. To start simple, you can combine the same gate with itself to make a bunch of inputs funnel to a single output. Here's a tree of OR gates, all funneling to a single light, and four buttons as our inputs. Pressing any of them will turn the light on. Here's an example using the AND gate and six switches. Each switch needs to be turned on to enable the light. Go crazy with this. You have permission. Here's a light puzzle. You need to toggle switches in a specific way to turn on both lights. Two switches go through an AND gate to turn on the blue light. Then, the same middle switch and the far right switch connect to separate NOT gates, which then connects to an OR gate that powers the red light. Here's a puzzle that uses multiple input types, a touch plate, a target, and switches that all work together to enable a light. One switch runs through a NOT gate, and the other is a normal toggle. Then, step on the plate and shoot the target. Looks complex, but it's really just a series of AND gates at work. If you're watching this and you're already savvy with logic gates, leave a comment about some fun ideas you've experimented with. It could be anything. Now it's time for you to try making something. Here's some guided missions to get you thinking. Try to explore the options on your own to figure these out. Make a puzzle door. Using three switches, color code one switch as purple and the other two as blue. To open the door, the purple switch must be on, and either of the two blue switches must be on. Additionally, turn on a light and play a sound effect when the door is unlocked. Play a different sound effect when the door is locked again. Oh, and a hint for the door, use a bearing servo and its enabled property. Set up a shooting range. Create four targets, two reds, one yellow, and a green. Then, set up three light bricks of the same color. Make it so you have to shoot the two red targets first, then the yellow, then the green, to turn on each light in the right order. Shooting them out of order should do nothing to the lights. Set up your own dunk tank. Create two targets. When either of them gets shot, play a sound effect. When the second one gets shot, disable a platform powered by a bearing servo and play a different sound effect. If this video helped you, drop a like and hop into the BrickVista Discord. The next lesson is all about math gates. Doors, funky sound effects, the real fun stuff. This is where it all gets good. Subscribe and I'll see you there.